Welcome to the first JME SDK use case tutorial. In these tutorials I'm going to try and show some features of the engine and SDK um, by taking some use case and uh, implementing some simple application of function to show you things about the engine and the SDK at the same time. So what I'm going to try to do is um, make a little Quichotte who's running after mills, basically. So first thing we need is a model, because we want to have a Quichotte. Uh, in the SDK there's multiple ways to get models into the project. Um, you always put your models into the project assets uh, node. Uh, or folder uh, which appears as a node in your project. Um, so when I use the model import tool, models are automatically imported into this folder structure. Um, I can also, when I look at the files view, this is the project files, um, this is the assets folder, it's actually called assets, it's uh, just recognized as the project assets folder you can see its actual name is assets um, you can actually just copy files into these folders and uh, start using them for example textures or other things um, but I'm going to use the model import tool because it also imports the textures of models so to import the model let's open the model import tool I select my model, which is the good old Sinbad. And I see my model here. See that it imports successfully. And I also see what other textures and uh, whatever other files have been recognized. It also tells me it's been loaded successfully. So I can proceed to import it to my project. I have to specify the folder where it goes to in, inside my project assets. Um, this is because the texture references that are going to be stored in the final J3O file are going to be absolute. So this means the import path has to be known at the import. So, because I don't want my textures to end up in the models folder, I'm going to import the model to the textures folder actually. And I'm also going to copy the original model files so I can later reconvert the model or make changes to it and convert it again. So what I get is Sinbad, the converted model. I can look at it. I don't see anything here. But when I press this light bulb, I do. This is because um, the model doesn't have any lights attached. But still you need light to see them. So there's this camera light here. So when I have the model opened, I have the scene explorer on the left down here. And it shows me actually all the parts of the model, all the single geometries, even the meshes. It shows me the anim control that this model has. I can make him dance. Or the top run. Funny jerking because it's just the start of a jump movement. Um, basically when you have any model open the scene explorer is your tool of choice to uh, manipulate the scene. You can as I said select nodes, you can even copy paste nodes um, and you additionally have tools that you can invoke on a single um, spatials. 
or other things. You can add controls to spatial, you can add lights to a scene. You have certain tools that you can use to do things. Um, we're going to look into these or some of these uh, later. For now, just know this actually shows you your whole scene graph inside that J3.0 file. So, um, Sinbad is still in my textures folder and actually is supposed to be showed. So I copy over the J3.0 file to the models folder and just name it showed and then open it again and um, because I know this model is going to be too big uh, for my scene I'm going to scale him down so I select the base node of this model I go here to local scale and I just enter new values and it's going to be scaled down. Then I save this file and go back out. So, next thing we're going to do is make a scene for our Kishote so that he can hunt mills. By the way, I have a mill prepared here. Maybe you know this mill from another video. This rotation is actually not an animation, but a class that is inside my project here. More on that later. So as I said, I'm going to make a scene for Kishot. And to make a new empty scene, basically J3.0 file, I'm going to right-click a folder in the project assets and select New, Other and then scene, empty Jamie 3 scene and I'm going to call it scene. So this scene is literally empty. We don't see anything, we turn on the light even. I'm going to rename it to scene so I can later find it. And what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm going to add a light so that later there is some light in the scene. Then I want something for Kishot to run around on, so I need some terrain. I can switch directly to the terrain editor via this little button here. Um, but I'm also going to ch show you the other way, which is right clicking a scene and selecting edit terrain. You basically see the same window layout. You see the editor here, and you see the scene explorer, you see the same scene, you also have the same tools. What's different is this part down here where you see the special terrain editor tools. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually add a terrain to the scene which works like this. You go add spatial terrain. The total size, uh, don't overdo it here. Um, I'm going to go with this which is fine for now. Make it flat. And you have terrain. Note the standard terrain also creates a dirt texture in your textures folder when you add it first and it's not there. So that's the texture that you see. Um, the terrain editor would be a whole different tutorial so I'm gonna leave that to a later tutorial. 
For now I'm just going to make some simple terrain, obvious tools. Going to make some hills. So we have some interesting landscape for Kisho to walk in. I'm going to save that. So as you see, it's a bit shiny right now. That's because I have the light of my camera still on. I can turn it off now because I do have the directional light I added. Could maybe also add an ambient light. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So I'm going to save that. And... Um, well, what else do we need? We need mills, of course. So, I'm going to head back to the scene composer. And down here you see the scene composer tools. I can move the cursor just by clicking around in the scene. And what I'm going to do is not actually add any models to the scene. I'm going to link them to the scene. So, I'm going to click here, then right click one of these mills here and say Link in Scene Composer. And you see the mill is added over there. And it's important to select the right node because anything you add or link will be added to the node that you have selected here. So I have the scene node selected and I want some more mills here. So Kishot has more to do. So I'm going to repeat the process. Just right click the mill, link and scene composer. One on the hill. Okay, that should do. So now we have a nice scene that should make any Kishot wild, I guess. Um, so now what about our Kishot? And how do we add him to the scene? Well, this is actually something the application does. Of course the NPC shouldn't care for himself where he goes to. So I have prepared a little app state which controls adding Kishotes to a scene and making them do stuff. Basically it doesn't do much more than uh, load the Kishote if it's not already there. Which is done by Asset Manager Load Model. By the way, Asset Manager Load Model always caches your models and re-references textures. So you don't need to fear that when you use load model, you're gonna have copies over copies of the same model. If there's data that can be shared, like textures and stuff, that's going to be shared. So you can always use asset manager load model to get an instance of your model. Um, so yeah, this is what this app state is doing. So I'm going to open the scene. And run this app state. Select the app state. And set my Kisho to running. Well, as I see, he's not very agitated. That's because there's no code that makes him do anything. So how can we add code? Well, the Kishote is a model and by that it's a spatial. And spatials can have controls attached to them. So what I'm going to do is make a control that controls Kishote in a Kishotish behavior and his Kishotish behavior. And um, that's, of course, hunting mills. So I have a 
Keyshot control here extends abstract control. Quickly explaining what it does, it tries to find mills around it. And if he finds one, he's going to run to it. And if he's there, he's gonna decide to look for another one and run to that. That's the simple code that's happening here. If I don't have a mill that I'm going to run to, I'm going to find a mill. And if that's done, and if the mill is still further than one meter away, it's gonna move towards the mill and also look at the mill. Um, this is happening each frame, so each frame we only move a small step towards the mill, which is our speed multiplied by TPF, time per frame. So what this does in the end is just make the thing move towards any mill it finds and then when it's there take another mill and move towards that, hopefully. So how do we apply the code? Actually because it's a simple control that's self-contained we can embed it directly into the model, into the Kishot model. So I'm going to open the model, make sure that my project is compiled and select the root node and select add control, custom control and I'm going to se select my Kishot control. Now see here, I got the Kishot control, I also got the speed parameter. And um, now actually he should run towards mills when he's put into a scene where there are mills. So let's check that. We open the scene again. And run the app state. And we see Kishot is actually running towards the mill. But right now he ran into a problem. He vanished inside the hill. There he is, he's coming out. And he's actually not having his feet on the ground. So this is because our code makes it go straight from one mill to the other in a straight line and of course doesn't account for any terrain around it so so yes that doesn't look too pretty but it works he's running around between the mills so to improve the sticking to the terrain problem um, I have a terrain track control which uh, pretty simply does a ray test on the terrain and checks if it collides or where it collides with the terrain and then applies that only that Y coordinate um, to the position of the spatial it's attached to. So if we have Kishot with a control that is running for the mills and then we add another control which makes his Y position be the same as the terrain plus his um, leg length. We're gonna open the scene and run our app state again. And now we see Kishot is actually standing on the terrain and when the hill is coming he's moving across the terrain as he's supposed to. Now he still looks a bit boring so he could be animated. We saw the animations in the beginning. He's got some animations so why not animate him? So nothing more simple than that we can make another control. I have an anim update control here and what it does is a bit different than what the other controls do. 
Um, it actually uses one of the other controls to get some information about what to do. So what we want to happen is when Kishot is moving from one um, mill to the other, he's supposed to be animated. So instead of uh, checking another set of settings or setting both controls to some state, I will just let this anim control here check the Kishot control for the current uh, speed of Kishot. And um, this happens here in the update loop. If there's a Kishot control and the Kishot control speed is above zero, then the animations for the character, for the model, are being set. And if his speed is zero, he's going to an idle animation. So I'm going to open Kishot and add this third control. Open the scene again. Run the app state and we see our Kishot is running. And when I tell him to be sleeping, the Kishot control just sets the speed to zero and the anim control automatically sets him to an idle animation. When he's back being agitated or relaxed at least, he starts running again. So, I hope this gave some insight on some aspects of the SDK and the engine. Um, have fun coding. <laughs>